Hello, welcome to Gemstone Tarot, Friday the 3rd of December 2021. See, this is what happens. We get towards the end of the year and I start getting the date right and then they change the year on me. Who's they? Who knows? Right, we're using a tarot deck that, of course, I can't remember the name of. Um, when you see it, this is the back of it. Hang on. If any of you can identify it, <clears throat> let me know. Actually, now, I have got a Lenormand deck by this person as well. That's how I found out. Mm, it may come to me. It may come to me. Okay, what do we need to know for this lovely Friday, last month of the year, coming up to a weekend eclipse? I know. Uh, uh, uh. These are good <coughs> to shuffle. Oof, right, they're coming out together. Oh my god. Well, this is why they're beautiful. If they're going to deliver messages like this, they need to be. <laughs> I've got what my friend would call the turd on the top lip coming. <laughs> like, how best to break this news? Okay, oof, cripes. Hmm. These two came out together and they were like that, kind of crossed. So we're going to look at them individually, but we're going to know that they cross each other in the reading. And as you know, if you watch me a lot, I don't really do crossing each other in the reading type things. So... This deck is gorgeous. We have the Strength card in reverse. I'll show it you in the upright as well. Leo energy, the energy of having enough energy. This is the, for me, I see the Strength card as self-mastery. But self-mastery, you know, it can be quite a lot of work and it can quite, quake, quake tight a lot of time. Take quite a lot of time, God. It's not even Mercury retrograde, although thank you for your comments saying that you really feel like it's been that way. I really feel like it's been that way. I've no idea why. Okay, strength in reverse. It's like I don't have the energy to have the energy. This happens as we're coming up to holiday season. And, you know, in the UK, as we're sort of, it's a bit slate grey sky. It's a bit mizz. You get up in the dark. You kind of if you went anywhere, you'd go home in the dark, but now you don't really go anywhere because of what's been going on. So you kind of just watch other people trudge around in the dark. And it, yeah, it is a bit challenging and it is winter and we do get to this point. <clears throat> and I feel like maybe we're supposed to get to this point where you feel so sick of the year that you're glad that it's kind of changing or you feel so sick of the season that you're, you've... Do you remember yesterday we had the void and it was embrace winter? And I know that I am not exactly embracing winter, but I'm saying we're trying. And I think there are some of you among the group here who probably feel the same. Excuse me drinking, I've got um, allergies in my throat. Okay, we have the 10 of swords. What a card to be crossed by. Isn't it gorgeous? Well, as far as the Ten of Swords is ever gorgeous. So we are reminded, it's kind of samurai-ish as well. We're reminded of the book I had in my very early 20s, A Soldier Lies Dead. No, A Soldier Lies Down on the Ground, pierced by Ten Swords, and he is very dead. If you can imagine that scene, there'd probably be a few other people in the room and everybody would, would parrot it at the same time. You know, someone would turn over the card and there'd be a collective like that, and then everyone would go, and he is very dead. Okay, but actually, now that I am a more experienced tarot reader, I've come to not love the Ten of Swords, but I've come to know it, and this is what tarot reading is all about. It's like people. You know, they seem like one thing when you meet them, and then you get to know them, and... It goes one way or the other, you know, you either the stakes are raised on what you thought or you kind of lower the bar. Ten of Swords against strength means you needed to reach this point. 
it could be with a particular person, it could be with family, I mean, family in the holidays. It's like the worst wedding, isn't it? <laughs> it's like the worst drunk wedding. But there it is. Okay. This rather beautiful card here, the Seven of Swords. I mean, if you're going to do Seven of Swords, do it like this. You know, this deck is so gorgeous. Um, it really is. I hope the camera catches it. It's difficult to put it on the other camera because there's so much white in the background that it doesn't pick it up as well. So this is obviously some form. Normally it's some form of betrayal. Do you know what? I'm not seeing it as a form of betrayal. I'm seeing it as an escape or a timely exit when you need one. There are going to be times, I think, maybe this is to do with the eclipse and coming into holiday season, where you're going to feel like you don't particularly have the energy to deal with whatever it is that you should be dealing with. And do you know what? That's okay. I'm here to say it's okay. Ten of Pentacles. Family, security, can be money, can be workplace, it can be anything that's to do with shoring up your foundations. That's the most important thing. And sometimes the Seven of Swords comes out when it's more important to put yourself first, second, and maybe third as well. You know, especially if you're dealing in a situation where perhaps historically that hasn't been the case. Next to the Ten of Pentacles, we've got the Five of Swords, Venus in Aquarius. And this is exactly what it looks like. And it's a sense of detachment. But do you know what? Normally I read this as a sense of somebody else's detachment. At the moment, I'm reading it as yours. If you need at this point to emotionally detach from whatever this is to get the job done or to um, sustain your own energy level, you do that. That's Seven of Swords. Seven of Swords can be making the most politic move with a small p. In other words, manoeuvring, choosing your moments, disappearing when you need to and living on a need to know basis. Everybody in this situation doesn't need to know everything about everything all the time. And if they do, it doesn't need to come from you. And even if they want to talk about it and you don't, you don't need to talk about it. We're being bossy today. We're being bossy, Leia. Leia's like, that's her Superman pose. And we have the beautiful Wheel of Fortune. This is gorgeous, isn't it? I've never used a spinning wheel. I confess I sent off for an embroidery set which arrived today. Um, and looks fiendishly complicated and I don't think I'm ever going to be able to do it. But there you go. Wheel of Fortune says, whichever way it goes here, things are going to change. We've got this nice, I think a, a new moon eclipse in Sagittarius is a nice thing. You know, the energy feels good. There's going to be some change and there's going to be some philosophical acceptance. That's my philosophical acceptance, mine. I'm looking at it on the other camera. I like that. Let's do that. It's also a really good stretch. Oh, cripes. Okay. And next to it, winner, winner, chicken dinner or vegan alternative, the six of wands. Success, getting where you need to be. But like we, we did a reading a couple of days ago, or maybe it was yesterday, who knows, um, which said it was about the diet. It was, um, oh, it was... Actually, I don't know if it was the daily reading or not. Whatever it was, we did a reading that was talking about the diversions. I'm feeling uncomfortable that you were being diverted, but actually it's all in the diversions, okay? Then we have the Page of Cups here, which is the teapot, <laughs> with the King of Cups. That's nice. King of Cups may be someone who has power or influence over you this time but it's emotional power or influence. If it was King of Pentacles, it's more financial. King of Cups holds the cups. Um, and the Page of Cups is not the same rank as the King of Cups. This may be an offer coming in from somebody or something, and you may need to weigh it up. It may have a hidden price in it, 
or it may actually turn out to be something good. We have also, and I can't ignore, the lovers in reverse. Let me show you that card because it's gorgeous. Isn't that beautiful? When you get the lovers in reverse, of course, whatever you thought, you think you don't have a choice when you get the lovers in reverse, and sometimes you're right, there isn't one right at the moment. Take the diversion, making the choice, that will happen anyway. I often feel with the lovers, and I'm going to use an Angel Answers card, I often feel with the lovers that there is a built-in kind of crossroads, almost whether you like it or not. So know that you will, you will end up at that crossroads anyway. And it looks like with the six of ones that it will be okay. So have your question ready. Oh, that's good. I like that. I've never seen that one. Oh my God, this is really nice. That one. I like this. So this is particularly for physical things as well and energy levels. We have improving health. And look, I mean, these are all coming from different parts of the pack. Recovery. And the situation will improve. Now, the reason that that can happen is because you put yourself first, second and third. And let's say this also involves your very close family. You put you and yours ahead of whatever that is, okay? And you never apologise and you never explain. Oh, there's a big seagull. Leave me a comment, let me know how it resonates. I'll see you tomorrow. Namaste.